Well, good morning. It is a good morning, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It really is. Well, if you're here for the first time, you don't know who I am saying that it's a good morning. Um, I am Reverend Patrick, and over here is the beautiful Reverend Rita. Rita. <laughs> and we have the foxes over here, Michael and Carrie. Ah. Oh. And like I said, this is a good day. We have a lot of people online today. They, they let us know that. But I wanted to share something right out of the gate today that our member Judah Freed, those of you that know Judah and his lovely wife, Melissa Mojo, they um, are in uh, California right now, in Los Angeles. And he went out there to have a procedure that was very, very, very important. Um, and some things got a little this way and that way, and Judah's watching. So let's just say aloha to Judah and Melissa. <laughs> We're your family. So some things went left and right, but in the mind of God, there is no time or space, but things got a little changed. So he's going into another type of procedure on Tuesday. And so we need to hold that because we want to hold that consciousness for him. And so we also decided that since the island and the CSL Kauai, that oh, we need to come out there. Reverend Rambo needs to go out <laughs> to Judah and to Melissa. So I will be leaving tonight on a jet plane. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's very, very important. And we love it. And we're going to bring some CSL Kauai and bring most of all Kauai to you, Judah. So I will see you tomorrow. It's a, it's a late flight. So just wanted to let you know, because we're family, that this is how we uh, operate here. This is how we, and we're dedicating this service today to many things, but today this service is dedicated to Judah and Melissa. So, aloha. Ah, yeah. Hmm. So, Michelle, we're going to bring up Michelle to do a little bit of announcing here. Let us know what's going on, and I'm going to button my shirt, and uh, then we're going to all get going. <laughs> yeah, I woke up, and I just went, what more would there be to do? And I just walked out the door. <laughs> um, so bringing up our wonderful board member and practitioner intern here is Michelle LeMay. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Well, we have lots of things that are going on here at the center for August. Oh, no, September. August was full, too. I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> but for September, and I'm going to just concentrate on the next week because we have several coming up. However, your pamphlets also have everything listed for the month. And, of course, there's the email and the Facebook and all the different ways to stay connected. And it is a great way to stay connected is to get into the classes and come to the different events, especially because it is family. And I know most of us are away from our families, so we create our own families. So first up tomorrow night, Reverend Diane here is going to be doing, yeah, you can stand, you can stand. <laughs> there's, some new, there's some new people, yay. I know, <laughs> yes, taking bows. <laughs> we never want to assume that everyone knows who you are, so we will show you off every time. 
and um, Reverend Diane is going to be doing her second installment of Taste of Meditation, and it's going to be tomorrow evening from 6 to 9, and that is a way to really delve into these inner resources that we have through meditation. So she's going to be talking about five different styles and types of meditation. It sounds like you also practiced some meditation yesterday as well. Okay, it's experiential. All right, awesome. There you go. So whether you meditate or you don't, or you find you have a hard time and need to learn more how, you know, this, this would be something that you could gain a lot from and take tools that you can start right away in your everyday life and in your spiritual path. So that's Taste of Meditation tomorrow evening. And then we also, Reverend Diane again, you don't have to stand this time though. Same, <laughs> same person. She's going to be doing Feel Good Friday coming up on Friday evening, and that is also at 6 p.m., and that's a way to come together as community, do some meditating, some reading, some discussion, and of course, just, uh, again, another way of putting this philosophy into our lives. So that's going to be the two events that Reverend Diane's doing this week. And then we do have the continuation of a course that started this past Thursday. So we've got nine more weeks for Essential Earnest Homes. Yeah. <laughs> Highly recommended from Patrick. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> and it is a class that you can, you know, commit to the whole full time. We have nine weeks left, or you can come and go as your schedule allows. But it is studying the philosophers and the mystics that Ernest Holmes gleaned all his information from. So if you're into the modern mystics, like Edgar Tolle, Deepak Chopra, Louise Hay, uh, Mike Dooley, if you're all into that, this is the former or the past ones, that all the mystics and the philosophers that are the same, same, but just from the past as opposed to the modern ones. So it's a great way to, again, delve into the philosophy on a deeper level, onto where it comes from, where Ernest Holmes got all his teachings and what we believe. So that's going to be on Thursday evenings for the next nine weeks, and that's from six to eight on Thursdays. All right, so lots happening this week. Thank you so much for your kind attention and enjoy your service. It's okay. Okay, so also next Sunday at 3.30 is the International Day of Peace and we certainly could use peace all the time. So it's at Lydgate and it's a kind of a potluck thing and it'll be a lot of fun and it's with the IROC, which is our interfaith group that CSL Kauai uh, belongs to and is a part of. So come on out um, round 3, 3.30 um, at Lydgate Park next Sunday, the 18th. Okay, so let's take some time for ourselves, shall we? I think that's a great idea. And I would like to bring up one of our other um, wonderful practitioner interns, Rob Jones, who is leaving the live streaming as we speak to come up here and, uh, and the safe hands of Ray back there. So there you go. Welcome. Thank you, Patrick. And aloha. And I want to say aloha to my friend Judah. Uh, we all love you. And I'm dedicating this um, meditation to you, Judah. Um, <coughs> if you would please um, just relax in your chairs. And I invite you to go within, close your eyes if you would like. The little quote I have here is from a French writer of the 19th century. Andre um, Kiel. If you go deeply enough into the personal, you reach the universal. If you go deeply enough into the personal, you reach the universal.
if you go deeply enough into the personal, you reach the universal. And as you come back into the room here slowly, what I know <laughs> is that the one spirit, the one life, the thing itself that is filled with the love, abundance, beauty, everything blessed, is now and always has been within us, each and every one of us. And I know that this service is blessed. How could it be anything other when it is blessed always in spirit? And for this wonderful manifestation of this wonderful service, I give such great, great mahalo, mahalo. Thank you. As I release this into law, as law that always says yes, we say together now, and so it is. Well, hi, everyone. We're going to ask uh, Rob to continue up here. As we recognize that this is September 11th, as we light this peace candle and many of us remember what happened on that day and so we want to honor all the people and their families that were affected by that tragedy knowing that they are right here in our hearts and will always be here in our hearts that life is continuous expression that life continues eternally in the goodness and love that is spirit is God so we want to take a moment of silence for this remembrance, so take a deep breath and just settle in our chairs and just feel that love. So just bringing ourselves gently back, keeping that deep silence, that sacredness within us, knowing that we are always connected, always, to all of life. We give thanks, and so it is. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank okay. you Michael and Carrie. Thank you. All right. Lots of things going in and out today, right? <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome again. And it just it feels so good to just be here today during this time, right? Mm -hmm. To know that you got family. Like Michelle said, a lot of us don't have it here on the island, so we are that. Oh, mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. So if you're here for the first time, this is Center for Spiritual Living Kauai, where we teach and practice a philosophy called the science of mind and spirit, 
which is a beautiful practical healing and teaching philosophy. What we express here, each of us sitting in our seats, is that divine presence, that divine light, that divine energy that's never been touched by anything. And that all of experience is us living that divine energy in the way that we get to choose to live it. So when we bring that highest part of ourselves to our lives, it's amazing what can happen. And we'll be talking more about that today in our, in our messages. So just remember that this is a teaching and a healing philosophy. I don't know that we've said that before. It's a teaching and a healing philosophy because one of the things Ernest Holmes wanted, the founder of Science of Mind and Spirit, who was just a great synthesizer of a whole bunch of other wonderful ancient wisdoms, was that we would take it and use it, that we would learn it and that we take it out and use it to heal our lives because all he really wanted, his whole mission in life was for people to have better lives, to have happy lives, to have prosperous lives, to have joyous lives and express themselves in the highest, highest God self. So that is why we are teaching and a healing philosophy. The more we reveal our true selves, the more the healing in our lives takes place. So thank you for being here. And who is here for the very first time? Just raise your hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> there we go. Um, and, uh -huh. Yeah, I see it. I see it about there. It was, it was called the half, half raise. Yeah. Over here, anything? No, we have data. Okay, so I think there's a couple of you. So we'd like to uh, tell you a little bit about yourself. And that would be what? That you are magnificent. <laughs> you don't know how beautiful it is for me up here to watch the expression go from, oh, <laughs> that. Oh, that. And we know that about you because we know it about ourselves, do we not? So let's all say it together. I am magnificent. Oh, that sounded so good I could hear it again. Let's do it. I am magnificent. Now look to your left and to your right and tell somebody else that they're magnificent. You're magnificent. You're magnificent. Jai's magnificent. Ah, oh, ma you're magnificent. I, know. I love her hair back there. You're magnificent. <coughs> there we go. We That's turn to right. The camera one more time? I think we should turn to the camera knowing that all, I think Sherry and Sherry Auburn's and are are watching. Who knows who else? Terry who knows? But, and you Judah and Melissa are. are you, you are magnificent. magnificent. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo! Yeah, stretching it all out now. Katie and Patrick are magnificent, I know that. <laughs> just saying. And just by the way, love your shirts. <laughs> Spiritual living they're Kauai. Collector items oh, right they're now. collector <laughs> items. So shall we open this up? <laughs> shall yes. we open this up, Carrie and Michael? Yes, yes, we shall. And look who's up here. Uh -oh. Luis is on drums. Luis in the Woo! house. Do, 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 do. All righty. All right, everybody. Just rise up, rise. Maybe. All right, here we go. Rise and shine. Right now I'm here to live. Right now I'm here to live. Right now I'm here to give. Right now I'm here to give. Right now I'm here to love. Right now I'm here to love. The earth below and the sky above. In the sky above, marvelous, miraculous, green life rooting down, rising up to reach the sun, rising up to reach the sun. And every being has its season and its time to shine. We're gonna keep growing free. One, gotta clap to we go. Right now, I'm here to live. Right now, I'm here to live. Right now I'm here to give. Right now I'm here to give. Right now I'm here to love. Right now I'm here to love. The earth below and the sky above. The earth below and the sky above. Here we go. Marvelous, miraculous, green life rooting down. Rising up to reach the sun. Rising up to reach the sun. Every being has its season and it's time to shine. 
We're going to keep going free. Ooh. And what I know is that we are free. We are free to shine. Shine that inner light that just goes out into the world. We are free. We are shining our light. And I am so blessed in this moment to look at each and every one of us right here expressing who we are. And that is good. That is life. That is beauty. That is peace. That is love. Love's the only answer. Can you say that with me? Love's the only answer. Love is the only answer. So knowing that, I just say mahalo, mahalo for all of this consciousness that's before us, in us, and as us. As together we say, with, so it is. And so it is. is, everybody. Let's raise One, the roof. Two, two, here we go. Right now I'm here to live. Right now I'm here Sing it, Jack. to live. Right now I'm here to give. Right now I'm here to give. Right now I'm here to love. Right now to love the earth below and the sky above the earth below and the sky above here we go marvelous miraculous green life rooting down rising up to reach the sun rising up to reach the sun and everything has its season and it's time to shine we're gonna keep going free growing free we love you judah Aloha. i saw reverend rita just letting it go up here too did you guys see her she was like doing the hip stuff what's happening that was great oh they're over here Glad I pointed it out for all of you <laughs> just in case you didn't see it <laughs> Okay, so this is one of our very special times of the year where we honor people that are new members in the Center for Spiritual Living Kauai. And what it means to be a member here, the most important thing it means to be a member here is that you've made a commitment to your own spiritual growth, however that looks to you. And that you've said, because once you're like, you're accountable because you've, you've become a member, so now you, you know, you gotta show up for yourself because we're all watching you and making sure you're okay. <laughs> Making and she sure. doesn't mean show up in this room. She means show yeah, up. Show up for yourself. Self. Yeah, it's nothing about that because the door is always open here, as we know. It swings both ways. So um, it's about you. And you've decided to make this your spiritual home, which is great because you get to come here and support Center for Spiritual Living Kauai and support yourself, support your friends here. And it's just a community commitment, really, more than anything else. So we want to invite the following people up so that we can honor them. And... Desiree Hoover. Desiree. And just stay up here, Desiree. <laughs> Ryan Hager. Yay. Ryan. Stay on up. I told Patrick he could give the hug so I can I'm hold the, the microphone. Today. He's the hugger. I'll hug later. <laughs> okay. Faye Kirk. That's you. Come on up. Come up for your hug, Faye. Patrick. <laughs> Ruth Doobie, where are you? There you Ruth. are. Ruth. <laughs> I didn't shave today, so just in case. You know. <laughs> God, I'm just telling all tales out of school, right? And then Paulo Dauenhauer. Paulo. <laughs> oh, Paulo. Paulo. <laughs> <laughs> what a great group. Paul? See, we had to wait till you got back on island for this to Ma happen. He tried Melody to sneak Maston. off. Melody Maston. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Woo. a nice crowd up here today. Yeah, we have a nice, beautiful. Yeah, they are. They are all very people. nice, very nice. And Jan Hovey. Yay. Yay. <laughs> And I don't think he's here. <laughs> She's got the whiskers on that. I one. don't think he's here. Robert Gluckson, Gluckson is not no, here because I, I don't see him either. They usually come together. Okay, so he also is a member. And then we want to invite up Katie and Patrick. 
to come up because yeah. they have become members already, but they didn't have the opportunity to be honored as members. So yeah, come they, on up. They became members and then they tailed it off to the mainland. Yeah. <laughs> So as we always do on this beautiful day is we sing um, our beautiful chant by Karen Drucker called The Face of God and let them know who they are. All right. Congratulations, yes. That was awesome. What do other people do on Sunday mornings is all I want to. <laughs> That's my favorite. I'm going to get a drink of water. You're on. day <laughs> a lot happening do you believe that everything that's happening is hap it, that God is right there whatever you call it the power the source the energy it's right there no matter what is happening no matter if it's 9-11 or a hurricane or a beautiful baby blessing or just drinking a cup of tea or coffee that there's a presence that's right there wherever you are. 
wherever you are, wherever I am, wherever we all are. So when we're thinking about the three wise little monkeys <laughs> that we're talking about today, which is an ancient, an ancient, ancient wisdom, the three little monkeys, who speak no evil, hear no evil, nor see no evil. This is what we're talking about. This is the basis. I love it. This is the basis of our whole philosophy. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. And I'll add, think no evil. Because that's where it all comes from anyway, is our thoughts. So Ernest Holmes wrote, one of the most illuminating things which mysticism has revealed is that evil is not an ultimate reality. It is simply an experience of the soul. Get this. It is a simply an experience of the soul on its journey toward reality with a cup, capital R. Evil is not an entity, but an experience on the pathway of self-unfoldment. It's a lot of words. But this is why we can now, first of all, I want to define evil because the way we define it in the science of mind and spirit is not what we sometimes think of evil like, oh, we did a bad thing and therefore we're being punished or that's evil and that's an evildoer and yada, 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 on, on, on with evil. But when we use the word evil, what we're saying is it's a misuse of the power. It's an inversion of good. So... We get, it's, a, it's actually a belief in duality that there could actually be good and evil. Take that in, because it's, it's kind of, it's, it's what sets us apart, and it's one of the hardest things sometimes for people to, to grasp in this philosophy, is that it's a belief in duality, and that is what creates evil or misuse of the law in our, in our own lives. Now, we also use the term evil to describe things like if we're f suffering financially, if we're suffering um, with our health, all of those things seem like they're an inversion of good because we have believed that they are. But in reality, all they are is an experience, what did he say? An experience of the soul on its journey toward reality not an entity, but an experience. So once we can believe that this is just an experience that we're in and that everything is actually directed by the power of our, of our, our, of our spirit, then that's where the healing takes place. So when we are in a place of you know, discontent about something, we don't go on a hunt to find out why it happened to us and blame ourselves for it. What we do is remember who we are. All healing takes place by remembering who we are. If we remember the story that we told here about Anita Marjoni, the, the lady that was um, in the coma and who came out of the coma completely healed, was when she was in that coma, she realized the omnipresence and the complete and total love that she was immersed in, and it totally brought her to a place of healing. Not it, it ended up being physical healing, but the, where it started was in her mind because her mind totally connected and united. So see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. We can't have it both ways. Like we can't, <laughs> we can't, like there's a quote in the Bible that says you can't like bring a gift to the altar and be hating your brother over here or something and expect the gift to be, you know, to be accepted. You can't, like your mind can't be in two places. We call it mixed messages. You can't say, oh, that's why we can't just say, oh, God is all there is, everything's good, when inside we're feeling this churning and this, and this you know, um, unrest. Because th it's what's inside is the thing that's, what we're thinking, what we're feeling is the thing that's out picturing as our lives. So it's really simple. It might seem complicated, but it's really so simple. And a place to start is in meditation. If you don't meditate, I suggest you take Reverend Diane's workshop. If you have a hard time meditating, or if you just think you have no time for it, it is a place to start. Because if you walk out the door in the morning, 
and I'm not, I don't mean to scold anybody, but if you walk out the door in the morning, <laughs> and I am, and expect, <laughs> and expect your day to really unfold well, and you haven't taken the time for yourself to make contact with that part of yourself that is everything that you're totally united with, then chaos ensues. Now, I had such a day on Thursday. <laughs> but what happened is I started my day in meditation. I started my day saying everything was unfolding perfectly. I started my day saying God is right where I am. And some of these are little examples and some of them are big examples, okay? First thing that happened is I looked over on my text and I heard about Judah. Now that's a big example of, of being centered when somebody gives you news that that, you know, that things aren't going the way that he expected them to go and that things are a little bit more serious than they were before. Now, what are we going to do? All of a sudden say, well, God's not, all of a sudden say, not, you know, this can't be healed. All of a sudden say, I'm sorry, but that's not the truth. Because the truth is, there's no such thing as a difference. And my teacher used to tell me this. There's no difference between a cold and cancer. Take that one in. And this person that said this proved it proved it. Because what I said before, we're making all this up, we're making these experiences up because we want to know God and we want to get closer to God, so it's going to do whatever it has to take for us to remember who we are. Really, it's a beautiful thing. So that's the first thing that happened. But because I was prayed up, because I, I knew in that moment I was able to turn it around to good and say, okay, and then be divinely intuitive, and, and we said, you know, you need to go there, Patrick. That's, that's where you need to be, blah, 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 on and on. Then I got up and got to the car, and the battery was dead. So I'd already, you know, committed to <laughs> the finances of the trip, and I, something was wrong with the car. It didn't start. Now, did I panic? Did I do a treatment and the car started? No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, or the car. No, I have a belief system that says you need a, a mechanic. I have a belief system that says that. But what I did know was that I was going to be able to get that car, and I wasn't going to have to pay for towing to get it there. And that, th we knew this was happening with the car, right? But I didn't panic about it, and I knew it was going to unfold perfectly. And when I called Kevin's auto, I said, he said, I can't get to this till Monday. And I said, that's okay. My, it'll be fine. Everything's going to work out perfectly. Don't worry about it. It's okay. But can I get it down there today? And he's like, yeah. But the whole time I'm staying totally calm. And there was a time in my past, this is a little example, that I would have just, I would have flown out there and thought, oh my God, how am I going to get here and there? And then, I don't know. No. You breathe first. And you say, there's no such thing as evil. God is all there is. And God is right in this too. And there are al is always a solution and a resolution to everything. So everything unfolded perfectly. Patrick and I had to get the directions out to figure out how to jumpstart a car because we don't know how. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but they, they, all right, we were, well, no. I was like, we can't, because Michael scared us to death and told us that we better not do it incorrectly or the battery might blow up. No, I'm teasing, no. Because <laughs> he was a fireman, anyway. So, <laughs> did the car start? Yes, it did. Do we get it down to Kevin's? Yes. As soon as we got it, it died again. So what I'm trying to say is we didn't panic. We just walked in faith the whole time. That's what this is about. It's about, and if you can't do it when your car's not starting, how are you going to do it when you get some big disease or something that you think is like insurmountable? How are you going to do it when all of a sudden you look at your checkbook and there's nothing in there or you lose your job if you can't do it in that simple situation? And what are you doing? We're just remembering who we are. And we're seeing no evil, speaking no evil, or thinking no evil. We're knowing that we have within us a power that's meeting any challenge that could possibly come in front of us. That's what this teaching is about, and that is what gives us the wonderful and beautiful lives that we want to live. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want to struggle through life. I don't want to like be not have enough of what I need to be in this life and enjoy it. I, I want to enjoy my life. I want to live my life fully, but I got to enjoy it from where I am because we only get what we understand and we grow in understanding. So we got to start right where we are. 
and just do it. Consistency is like the most important thing, consistency and perseverance and love. But it gets so much easier and easier the more that you do it, the more that you practice the more that you remember who and what you are. So I have so many beautiful quotes <laughs> by Ernest Holmes, but I'm just going to close with this one. Um, if I could find it, because I put it in the middle. Oh, that, that, mm. Well, anyway, I'll, t I'll, I'll just basically tell you what it is, because I remember it. It's one of my favorite ones. It's that there will come a day when the thought of evil, the belief in evil, will be rolled up like an old scro scroll and put to bed forever. That's my rendition of the quote. And that we won't believe in it anymore because we'll have believed in good and we'll have known unity, which is our spirit is one, each other, and one with God at all times. And so it'll be an old scroll that'll be like tossed aside and people might pick it up a million years from now and go, what the heck was that about? <laughs> right? So I love that. And um, I would just invite you to take the time for yourself to remember who you are. And if you can't remember who you are, you have people here all around you that will look at you and say you are magnificent until you believe it. Sometimes it does take another person to know that for you. So I love you, and I know it for you in every single solitary moment, and I, I just have such a passion for this, this idea that there is no evil, only good. So I just give thanks for that, and I just know that it is manifesting out into the world right here and right now in each of our lives as I say, and so it is. Thank you. So now we get to listen to the angelic, beautiful music of Michael and Carrie Fox. Aloha. The song we're about to share song called I Won't Give Up by Jason Mraz, which is very fitting today. They're talking about perseverance and just everything. So um, dedicating this to everybody and especially Judah for what you're showing us in the whole community.
give up on us even if the skies get rough giving you all of my love I'm looking up Wow. We are so blessed to have you two just saying. Ooh, I won't give up. I will not give up. And I love the other lyric in there. How old is your soul? How old is your soul? Oh, these three wise monkeys, we're on this animal thing, obviously, this month, because last week was the owl. And now we've got the monkeys going here. But um, I actually, while looking up the ancient wisdom, because this month is all about wow, the wealth of wisdom, this is, these monkeys have been around for a long, long time. And they've been in the Proverbs, and they've been really teaching, especially, I was reading, children. And also a little note, Gandhi, we all know who, this wonderful man of peace, he never had any possessions ever except the three wise monkeys. The only thing that he had, he kind of took around with him, um, which surprised me because it's such simple wisdom, right? So what do you get when you see no evil, you hear no evil, and you speak no evil? You get God. You get God. Nothing to look for, nothing to be. It's just, and, and we think to ourselves, is it really that easy? Well, no. That, we, well, that would take out all the gossiping and all the other stuff that we enjoy so much in our daily conversations. That's how we communicate a lot, right? About what's going wrong and what's not happening. And they did this and they did that. And I was thinking of 9-11 this morning as I was doing my morning blog about it. And that was a real opportunity to see evil, right? Real opportunity to see the evildoers. Real opportunity. But guess what really happened on that day? Love rose from those ashes, from those buildings and those planes and everything else. Love raised its mighty face. Or people couldn't have come from all over the country driving to New York to help, to assist. That was all backed by love. Yeah, love. Love was the thing that came up. And those people that perished on that day did not perish, A, because they're still alive, but here's the deal. We carried on something for them. They have a legacy. A legacy that we have here today, and that's a legacy of love. That we dared through it all, through all of the suffering, all of the pain, all of the evil that we thought was happening, we turned away from it, and we turned to love. We turned from love. And so I will not desecrate their names or anything else, I will carry on love for them, that they were able to be our teachers. So we're back this. I have this wonderful little um, poem about this. Or the door, or the door of the sacred temple, they sit in their wisdom, the three. The little deaf monkey the little dumb monkey, the monkey who will not see with their eyes shut to evil, ears that hear only the right, lips that are dumb to scandal. They sit in their silent might. They sit in their silent might. Kids need to hear this. 
But it's not enough to just go, blah, 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 you know, no, I see no, 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 it's not happening, no, no, no. Right? Because that's what we get accused of occasionally in this philosophy, burying our heads in the sand. We're not burying anything except this nonsense that evil is a power of its own. It has no power of its own. It is a lie. And it's a lie that has lived quite well throughout centuries. But what I do know is that there is a power for good, and it has always prevailed. And that good is right where we are. Interesting, Ernest Holmes. Now this one you got to kind of go, ooh, oh, on a Sunday. This is what he has to say about evil as well. God, fasten your seatbelts. God does not know evil and therefore cannot talk about it. <laughs> or conceive it in any form. It gets better. God does not even hear us, could not hear us, when we talk about sin or evil. If God could know, this is where the seatbelt part comes, if God could know sin, then he would be a sinner. If God knew of that, of sin, knows nothing opposite of himself. Okay, so now we just breathe for a second. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> what it means is this. When we think that God is not present, and I have felt that many, many times in my life, going through childhood, going through some really incredible, horrible, if you're going to write it down, evil doing. And I was wondering where God was. How did you leave me in this time of need? Because I was approaching it from another place. I was living in the evilness of it. But when I turned, I realized that God had been there all the time and not God out there. The reason that God doesn't show up is because God isn't showing up anywhere. There's nowhere to get it. It's right here. A little passionate about this today. Because I'm tired of looking for God. I don't know about you. I'm tired of seeking. I'm tired of going where and why and do all that and who did me. No, I'm tired of it. Because God never left me because I am that God that we're speaking of. And each and every one of you, if you want to go find God, just close your eyes. Speak no evil. Hear no evil. See no evil. But that's not just enough. You've got to turn away from it and then look at something new. Look at love. Come from love. Be love. You want prosperity? Be it. Don't take on the identity of lack. Hi, I'm lack. Nothing's happening. Evil, evil. No, good, good, good. Love, love, love. Oh, this wasn't even anywhere near notes in my notes today, but I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter because it's right here, right strong, and I'm serious. No more looking for God, everyone. We have been looking for God in all the wrong places. We've been looking for it as a Savior, We've been looking at it to come in and save the day when the day has already been saved. I am that wonderful energy that we've been looking for. And each one of you, as I'm looking out, I'm going, God, it doesn't get any better. We're okay. We're safe. No matter what lies are being told out there, there are no evildoers. There are people that forgot who they were. Do you think for one minute that all of this catastrophe and people would do it if they felt good about themselves, if they felt magnificent about themselves? They would never do that. We would never hurt anybody because we are, our nature is love. That's our basis. So when somebody has hurt me and when the abuse, the, the abuse that I, even I have went through, they would have never done it if they had known better. 
if they had known who they were, if they had known I am God, I am God, I am love, I would never have touched you or hit you or said horrible things to you. That would have never occurred. So the message today is forgiveness. It is time. And it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. But it needs to be constant. And I mean this, and I hope you know that from the bottom of my heart today. We have the greatest gift that has ever been given. And that's called life. And I know that Judah, who's watching, there is nothing opposite of good. And if you forget that, Reverend Rambo here will be coming to Los Angeles to remind you. That's what it is. This law of our being, and then I'll close, believe it or not. This is the deal. The law of my being, that thing that, that makes all things happen, doesn't need me to talk to it nicely. It's called an impersonal law backed by love. So I can say, this is what I claim for my life. This is what I want for my life. And it can be because it already is in the mind of good. Oh, my goodness. All on a Sunday morning. Well, anyway, I'm going to leave you with a little... Uh, oh, and you know who this is by? Thomas Paine. Does anybody know who Thomas Paine is? One of the... Fun yeah. Who would have known he was thinking about monkeys back in 1802? This is what he says. These are the only commandments that we need to live by, in his opinion. Thou shalt make a covenant with thy senses, with thine eye, that it beholds no evil, with thine ear, that it hear no evil, with thy tongue, that it speak no evil, with thy hands, that they commit no evil. 1802. That same demand was being made upon ourselves. I don't know how we got over to the other side of the tracks, my friends. But I do know that we can go back. And we can make a choice today. To let evil go. It has no power. The boogeyman is not real. But God and love is. Namaste. All righty. All ah, right. Let's just breathe into that for a moment. It's a lot to take home with us, right? But it's good stuff. Thank you, Reverend Patrick. Thank you, everyone. And um, this is our time. We're calling it sacred giving now because that's what it is. Your financial giving grows this center, which is all of our center, not just my center or Patrick's center or one person's center. It is our center and it is growing. And I know that that's happening. So it's just a matter of when it appears. <laughs> it's already here. So thank you for everything that, um, that you give today and always to Center for Spiritual Living Kauai. Let's take it away. Everything oh, we that have an they affirmation give on though. the mainland as well. Yes. So thank you out there. Let's as well. just read the um, before we start passing the basket. Let's read the um, no, it's okay. It was my fault of uh, the prosperity affirmation. I abide in prosperity. I am receptive to its abundance. I am receptive to its circulation in my life in the form of money. Money being God in action is absolute good. It's wholesome. It missing me, and I am prospered with it. I circulate it freely. I give as I receive. Take it away, Carrie. <laughs> and Michael. Grateful for life, grateful for love, grateful to all within and above. Here in our hearts, we can be. Life, 
grateful for love, grateful for all within and above. Here in our hearts, we can be eternally free, giving from a place of purity, honoring our spirit and integrity. Here in this place, creating a world that works for everyone. So what I know right here and right now is prosperity is, it's who we are. We can't get away from it. It's who we are. It's a verb. And we live it right here and right now in every single solitary part of our lives. Whether it's in our health, our finances, our creative expression, I don't care where it is, it's there. Prosperity is there and we live it fully. So I give great thanks for the prosperity that's been placed in these baskets, for the prosperity that's in this room that continues in each of our lives unfolding perfectly as I release this word with gratitude. And so it is. Grateful for love, grateful to all within and above. Here in our hearts, we can be eternally free. Thank you. Yeah, yes. thank you, everyone. I want to give a special thank you also to, as Patrick started to, to the people on the mainland who really support the center so much because they want it to be here when they come and they believe in the work so thank you and aloha so to as we remember you. also 9 11 jack was letting me know this is also the the anniversary of the hurricane aniki oh, yeah I so didn't know that. just remember wow. that in our prayers knowing that that we are always divinely safe and, and protected yes right, so if anything has um come up that you want prayer for treatment for us knowing the truth for you, there's a, a little box in the, called the yes box in the front, and you can put your prayer treatment in there, all right? And if you need to speak with us, please put your phone number. Sometimes you put it on there, but I don't think that you really want a session, because if you read the form, it says if you put your phone number there, you actually want to have a practitioner session or a minister session. So, but please put your name, because I'll tell you why I like the name there, because I like to speak your name because I think it's powerful to speak the person's name. And those, those, those requests are confidential. Nobody's going to know them besides our practitioner. Well, right now, Patrick and I. So just know that they're confidential, whatever they are. If, even if they go into Reverend Diane's hands, they're confidential. So please at least put your name on it so we can say it. it say your word and say your name. All right? Oh, the little Here's our Gabivana. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Thank and, w you. and why does it always say yes? Because, because the law only says, says yes. yes. And we speak our word into that law. All right. So are we ready for our closing? Let's Have I hit everything? I All right. All the new members, too. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. When 
there's light in the soul. There's beauty in the person. There's beauty in the person. When there's beauty in the person. There's beauty in the person. When there's harmony in the home. Harmony in the home. When there's harmony in the home. When there's harmony in the home. There is honor in the nation. There's honor in the nation. When there's honor in the nation. When there's honor in the nation. There is peace in our world. All right. What I know is thank you. Thank Thank you to everyone who's Ooh. present here and all those that have served, who I will mention in a moment. But I want to know and all of us to know that a healing took place today, a healing yes. of spirit for each and every one of us, for Judah, for Sherry yes. Teal, who is also out there recovering for all. A healing took place today, and I know that Ooh. that is a fact, and I say yes to it. And I yes. say thank you for being here and for holding this consciousness yes. for our community and for the world. And I say thank you to the to uh, where is she, <laughs> Rebecca, <laughs> who held the consciousness at the door, and thank you, and you welcomed everybody today. I say thank you to Michelle who gave the announcements, always so glorious. Yes. Thank you to Rob Ooh. back there who did a beautiful Mahalo. meditation and Thank you, thank you, thank you for the live streaming and Ray who I think had to leave. Thank him too to Roseanne for the programs and all that she does. I say thank you to Michelle for jumping into hospitality because Ron couldn't be here today. Thank you. I say thank you, Reverend Diane, for taking over the bookstore and, and, and educating us all in this beautiful science and this beautiful ancient wisdom. And I say thank you here we go. to angels over here. My uh, Patrick and Rita, everybody. Oh, I'll stop. I say thank you to Louise. <laughs> thank you. Everybody say thank you. Thank hey, you. Yeah. Mahalo. Thank yourself. Say thank you. So it, it is. is. No more living in fear. No more fear. We're gonna let it shine. No more living in fear. 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 We're gonna let it shine. Let it shine. There we go. No more living in fear. No more fear. We're gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Everybody is going for it now. Shine, shine, everybody. Shine, shine, shine. everybody. Shine, shine. You know you want to. Shine, shine. All around the world. Shine, shine. Woo! Shine. We have muff.